last time on Hakai, the sinister celestial mages found a dirty trick to get Zuno to reveal to them as much information as they would ever need to know. At the same time, Vegeta and Paikon would chase after Frieza to retrieve Janemba's cocoon, while the Frost Demon we know best would hightail it out of there knowing full well he has no chance against the pair. He would leave his brother's fate in the hands of our heroes. But wanting this fight all to himself, the prince demanded Paikon not interfere with his battle with Cooler, and instructed him instead to go after Frieza himself leaving us only to guess just how much stronger he's gotten since being released from his confinement. <laughs> Today's video is brought to you by NordVPN. We are really stingy about doing in-video sponsorships on this channel, but when Nord approached us, we wanted to make an exception. Not only for the delicious money which funds our various mansions and space travel, but it's also because it's a product we believe in. I've used it for the better part of four years now, for everything from letting streaming services think I'm in an entirely different country, allowing me to access all their movies and shows not usually visible to those in the United States, to protecting my IP address from hackers who want to turn Mondo Cool into an unnamed billionaire Bitcoin giveaway scam. It's also good for bypassing internet censorship or relevant, blocking malicious websites you may happen across via pop-up or search engines, and overall protect your identity by keeping your data private. I personally like to use it for hopping across the Atlantic to catch some Rick and Morty, as it's normally not available where I'm from. So get NordVPN's limited time offer of a two-year plan, plus four extra months super duper free at nordvpn.com slash mondo. And if you're still on the fence, it's good to know that it comes with NordVPN's risk-free 30-day money-back guarantee. This offer starts as low as $2.98 per month, but just for over $2 more, you can save a total of 69% off the original price. Not only get a secure high-speed VPN, malware protection, with tracker and ad blocker, but the complete plan also comes with a cross-platform password manager, which allows you to sync and backup passwords across your devices automatically. The data breach scanner, that allows you to check to see if any of your passwords, email addresses, or credit card details have been compromised. And finally, you also get an entire terabyte of encrypted cloud storage. So if you're still online without it, I'd recommend heading over to nordvpn.com slash mondo and protecting yourself today. This video is part 13 of an ongoing series and was created by Hakai. Support them and catch up fully using the links below. In the Quinn Planet system, Vegeta finds himself having a bit to say to Cooler now that he's finally able to meet him face to face. The man of legend himself. Although the Saiyan was not yet born at the time of his fall, his father told him a lot about the Frost Demon. Rumor has it he was so unnaturally powerful, even Frieza and Cold feared him. There have even been murmurs that even if they teamed up, it still would have proved futile. That's why they resolved to trap him instead. Playing mind games. The villain just behind his foe before he can react, just to boast his speed. He mocks that it's good to see that even Saiyan Cretans such as himself have retained his due respect. In fact, Vegeta should be most grateful that Cooler was betrayed by his kin. Had he been in his brother's place, the Saiyan would not have escaped the destruction of his planet. But now that he's free, he would like to be allowed to correct the mistakes of his family. Zipping behind the fiend in return, the prince could only hope that all those years locked away didn't weaken his body too much. However, now that he knows who Cooler is, he would like to introduce himself properly. Showcasing Super Saiyan, he is the prince of all Saiyans, the great Vegeta. This is a form his opposite actually recognizes, the blonde hair transformation. Frieza has mentioned it. He then questions if this is perhaps the form his vermin brethren achieved after the one which turned them all into howling monkeys. Vegeta responds that all he needs to know is, this is the form that Kakarot used to humiliate that brother of his for the first time. And this is only the first stage of a Super Saiyan's powers. His opponent is insulted by this. So with this first stage, he genuinely intends to face him? Who does he think he's dealing with? Though before the Saiyan shows him any more, and trust him, there is plenty. Cooler's going to need to prove himself worthy of his time. Egging him to shout for the simian to know his place. Although blocking the attack, the resulting shockwave passes through the prince like a freight train. If he hadn't turned Super Saiyan, even if he did manage to block it, that punch would have surely killed him. As he's stuck in thought, Cooler continues as a front as he screeches for him to stop gawking and fight. The single confrontation proves enough for Vegeta to stop playing around. He's going to have to keep up with his adversary's speed. Able to defend himself, Cooler retains his footing and chortles. Well, well, look who has quickly deemed himself worthy. The ever prideful Saiyan scoffs for the tyrant not to kid himself. This is still far from his most powerful form. Thinking, he knows that Cooler's strikes are not like Frieza's at all. They are much more precise and staggering. 
He had already assumed that the two of them had done a little training together, but is he already on his brother's level? Vegeta thought if he had managed to provoke him, he'd be able to find an opening and kill him quickly. But even angry, he seems to calculate very well what he's doing. The Saiyan knows he needs to be more careful, otherwise this plan might backfire. Prepare to die! Saiyan! On the planet of destruction in Universe 8, we rejoin Liquor in a standoff with Tyra, as she attempts to get him to simply hand over the cocoon containing one of the five primordial beasts. She taunts that they Hakaishans are way too dramatic. It would be so much easier for the both of them to just give her the cocoon. There's no need to die over it. But predictably committed to the cause, the fox god bellows that she better not dare underestimate a god of destruction. Giggling in the calm before the storm. How about we play somewhere a little more spacious? That's when Tyra notices something. It kind of looks like those tails of his are somehow making him faster. sinister look on her face. Tyra resolves that since he's so eager to fight. Before we abruptly cut away to Universe 6 to see what Goku's up to. On the Supreme Planet with Lei, the Saiyan finishes explaining that he needs to find these things called Primordial Beasts really fast. But he doesn't know anything about Universe 6, and that Vados lady has gone off somewhere. So, turning to his Supreme Kai, he thought maybe she could help who apologizes to him and reminds. She's only been on the job herself for a short time now, and is still learning, just like him. Causing Kiboro to interject if he could, this claim involving the primordial beast is quite the peculiar one. Many, many generations of Supreme Kaioshin have passed, since such things have been spoken of. For Goku, in other words, this means he doesn't know where these things are. And he doesn't. But he does have his resources. Here in the world of the Kais, they have a book which tells the entire history of this universe. He's sure there'll be something useful about the location of the beast called Hiru, which was one of the names revealed while following Frieza's story. But how does Kaboru know his name? Either way, Goku just finds this awesome. At the very least, they should have a lead now. <laughs> Using his magic, the Kaio assistant summons a gigantic book so heavy it actually indents the ground around it leaving our hero a bit dejected. He asks him to please not tell him he's going to have to read all of this to him. And not exactly. This is only the first book of the universe. The first of 100. Back with Liquor and Tyra in the South Galaxy. the north. As the battle rages on, Tyra's fatigue only begins to wear on her more and more. She curses that this is kind of rough with this limiting body. But didn't Brajan say something similar before? Her opposing destroyer smiles and chortles that from the legends he's heard, he expected more from the celestial mages. And if he wants more, she can show him more. She will enlighten him to why they call her the Great Warrior Mage. Happy to hear it. The fox also unsheaths a keyblade, mocking that she isn't the only one who knows how to use a simple sword. As Kaboru speed reads as fast as he can, Goku continues explaining everything he knows. Some super evil guys called the Celestial Mages want to catch a primordial beast in their universe. They say they're really strong, so he wants to fight them. The Kaioshin is awestruck by this turn of events. It's amazing that in such a short time as a goddess, she's already about to see this kind of action. But her assistant has some words for her regarding this assumption. He scowls for her to not to even think about it. A celestial mage is no opponent for beings like the two of them. 
The truth of the matter is, it's likely not even destroyers can defeat him. Perking Goku's ears. Even gods of destruction can't be these guys. Kaboru doubles down that is indeed the case. After Zara, the supreme deity, unsuccessfully attacked Zeno's realm, he was sealed away here. So the chief gods of his kingdom, the celestial mages, organized a mighty military and charged Zeno's kingdom. At the time, gods and mortals fought side by side to defend this multiverse. However, the enemy commanders were the five great celestial mages, extremely powerful beings. The strength, speed, and endurance of these beings was surreal, even for the gods of destruction. But these weren't the only things that made him dangerous. In addition to being extremely powerful, in the literal sense of the word, the mages also possessed spells which made them even more formidable. At the time, there were 18 universes in Zeno's realm. Therefore, 18 gods of destruction. Despite the numerical advantage, the celestial mages managed to stand up to the Hakaishans. Each one possessed the strength of around three or four destroyers. And it's said that the gods of the first generation were on average more powerful than those of the current generation. In short, no living destroyer can defeat a single mage alone. Lehi loses herself at the thought of this. She thinks that these guys must be really terrible, as she's heard the Hakaishans are very powerful. But that means Mr. Goku wouldn't be able to defeat one of them either. This comment causes the Saiyan's face to drop a little. Reversing her statement at his reaction, she tries to reassure him that she didn't mean it like that. But we all know our hero a little better. He clacks his fist and shouts, That's wonderful! That means he's gonna get even stronger fighting these guys. She laughs and nothing really seems to faze him. And of course not, he's always got his eyes set on someone bigger. If every obstacle discouraged him, he would have given up a long time ago. Though she has to beckon something. If that is the case, is that his motivation is driven by someone in particular. With Licker struggling to take out the Celestial Mage Tyra, just how will his battle go with the revelation that these villains are considered around four times stronger than a destroyer? And with Vegeta, will he manage to put down Cooler for good, or is demanding a fair one-on-one -on -one battle a big mistake?